Welcome to a new vlog, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. And we're gonna start this video with a set of three prying tools from Best, which is kind of uh, known in the mobile phone repair business. It's a Chinese brand that sells uh, these kind of tools. I like these because they have this uh, nice uh, rubber um, handle which provides a very good grip when you're trying to pry open an enclosure. I've previously used uh, this kind of uh, pry tool, but this is uh, kind of sharp on the edges and at the end, so you can't really grip it as well. And also, as you can see here, the small rubber pads are just uh, coming apart from the handle. But these look like uh, they're uh, molded over the metal piece so they should last better. Now you can purchase these as a single piece and obviously that's the cheaper option or you can choose this uh, three pack uh, and get all three models and I recommend getting this one because you have the different shapes which uh, might be uh, one might be better than the other. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out. Apart from these uh, metal uh, tools, I also use these uh, plastic uh, prying tools which are great for soft plastics because they don't leave any scratch marks but they are pretty soft, they bend and eventually break if you need to apply more force. I would be interested in uh, hearing what you guys are using for prying open the various gadgets that exist today. So let me know in the comments below. Next up, I have a simple K-type thermocouple. This model is uh, similar to the ones I have in my um, dual thermometer in my dual thermocouple thermometer. Uh, you've seen this one in uh, many videos. Uh, I use it to measure temperatures and I thought I'd get a replacement uh, because I am abusing uh, these thermocouples sometimes by measuring very hot stuff. So I, I'm expecting uh, one of the original thermocouples to fail at some point. So I thought it would be a good idea to keep a replacement uh, close by. Luckily, they are very inexpensive. It's just a problem of long delivery times here uh, where I live. So it's best to, to keep one of these as a spare. Next up, once again, a uh, dual CR2032 battery socket with on-off switch. And I say once again, because uh, in the previous mailbag, Vlog uh, 216, I also had a similar socket, but in that one, the batteries were stacked horizontally. While here, if I open this cap, they are stacked vertically, also in series. I kind of like the shape of this socket and I think with a small modification, uh, I can even make it work with a single CR2032 battery as well. This should be great for those uh, small hacks and mods where you need to add a small energy source to something. Next, I have a set of five pieces dual pole switches these are uh, part number KCD4 and um, are intended as a replacement for the switch on the Sanko 737G spot welding machine. If you remember, in the teardown, I messed with the original switch and although I managed to fix it, I wanted to replace it ever since just for my peace of mind. These switches are rated for 16 amps, 250 volts AC, so you can use them pretty much for any other project uh, they have this nice isolation between the two contacts, which is uh, good for safety in general. But in my case, I think I'm going to have to uh, remove this um, insulation wall because uh, in my case, the switch was soldered directly to the PCB. My next item is uh, pretty interesting uh, by its size because um, I have a lot of uh, different display modules he here in the lab, but this one is probably the smallest I have and it's measuring just 0 0.66 inch with a 64 by 48 resolution and it's an OLED uh, technology screen. It's based on the common SSD 1306 controller and it has white pixels. 
Now it comes in this uh, nice uh, plastic enclosure which protects it during shipping unlike other display modules that I've ordered and uh, they were shipped just in those grey plastic envelopes with a bit of already popped bubble wrap. But this one really well protected. The uh, display module is soldered to this uh, breakout board which is uh, compatible with the Wemos D1 boards so that allows you to stack it vertically with other modules and the interface is I2C and it, you also get in an address uh, selection jumper on the back. Now using this for display of text is not a very good idea given the size, um, it would be hard to um, read text of this display but showing some graphical icons for signaling the status of a module should work fine or maybe showing just a, a short numerical value like uh, the time, uh, like a watch face would also work. Now if you're interested in getting uh, this uh, screen, I will place a link in the description below the video, so do check them out. Next up I have a, uh, a slightly larger screen, but uh, not by much. It's 0.96 inch with 80 by 160 pixel resolution. Now this time this is an IPS technology uh, panel and it has all the required pins for the SPI interface as well as I2C uh, broken out. And it's based on the ST7735 controller. Now this being an IPS panel it means it should have better viewing angles and better color reproduction but that also depends heavily on the quality of this particular panel that they used. So you get a fair amount of pixels for the uh, small surface but still you'll have to be pretty close to this uh, display to easily read text from it. So uh, once again uh, I would think this is better for small icons and images and maybe a watch face type uh, where you only show a few large digits. Next I got some uh, new tubes of E6000 adhesive. This is like an universal contact type adhesive which I mostly use for my RC planes for gluing foam, plastic, wood, pretty much any material. It's cheap and uh, it works fine for me. Not sure if it's the best. There is probably better stuff out there but it's cheap and convenient to make me want to use it. I also like the fact that it comes in these uh, uh, small packs uh, which are just 9 millimeters because I don't use large quantities and I want it to come in a small pack so it doesn't get to uh, age very much after opening a tube. This gets uh, used up uh, pretty fast. My next item is a uh, very small module. It's a simple temperature sensor breakout board for the MCP9808 which is made by Microchip. And the story here is that I used to have a bunch of uh, temp sensor breakout boards, usually sensors from TI. Those were made by me, assembled by me and I used to keep those uh, in my box for whenever I needed like a temperature measurement. But on a recent job I couldn't find any of those and uh, I needed a reference temperature. So I ordered a few different ones from uh, AliExpress. This is one of them, like I said, made by a microchip, uh, plus or minus 0.5 degrees C accuracy up to 0.06 to 5 degrees C resolution and I2C interface. Now the actual typical accuracy, especially at room temperature, should be better than uh, 0.5 degrees Celsius. So that makes this a sensor decent enough for a wide range of applications. And as always, you will find a link for this in the description below the video. These are two mounting brackets for 2.5 inch uh, hard drive to 3.5 inch spacing. They are very cheap, I got them from eBay for just a couple of uh, bucks delivered, but they are not great uh, quality. They kind of do the job, but it's a, like a friction snap fit to insert the hard drive uh, between these two uh, rails. And um, you kind of need to use some force to, to insert it here. And I'm afraid that if with, with one of these uh, new thin and light SSD drives, as you push it in, in here between the brackets it might be possible for someone to actually break the SSD or bend it enough to cause it uh, harm while attempting to insert it in this bracket. So be very careful if you get one of these 
but once you get it installed in the bracket it works as it should it's a friction fit and it will allow you to install uh, a two and a half inch drive in a three and a half inch slot and I will be uh, overlaying a picture uh, of a slot because well I haven't done that in a while next I got myself one of these uh, dual suction cup thingies that you use to open up a uh, modern smartphone so one suction cup goes on the back of the phone to separate uh, the, the two halves while the other suction cup goes on the front so you then snap the the phone into like this hopefully without any damage this is the the cheap version from ebay i'm guessing there are better built ones out there like the ones from ifixit uh, but i think they sell a, a, a very similar model but since uh, this will be rarely used here on my bench um, it should be good enough for the purpose and there is another advantage to using something like this besides the ease of use it also offers protection because these jaws have like this uh, maximum opening range which is like maybe four or, or five centimeters and so it limits the amount of travel you will uh, allow for the two halves of the phone or tablet you are opening so it, it kind of limits the the ability to damage the, the flex cables my next item is uh, another tube of uv curable solder mask and you've seen this before in previous mailbags but that time it was green now i wanted to also get a different color i thought it might be useful to have two different colors for you know marking different uh, stuff on a pcb so this stuff is liquid you put a drop of this on a pcb you apply some uv light from a special uv flashlight and it will harden in a few seconds you can use it to uh, mechanically secure uh, repair wires or mods that you do on a PCB. You can cover up exposed copper with this um, and it will protect it uh, mechanically. It will offer strength as well as uh, corrosion protection from the environment. You will also need a good UV flashlight to harden this stuff uh, quickly. So check out Voltlog 208 where I showed a nice UV flashlight that I got for a few bucks and it works really well for stuff like this and the last item in this mailbag video is uh, this set of nozzles for my old hot air station it's a pretty old station which i only keep for the hot air uh, portion although uh, it also has an integrated soldering iron controller i don't use that uh, anymore it's pretty old uh, so my newer stations are better it's a pretty unimpressive as a station like I said it's very old but it still works and I don't use hot air that often to feel comfortable paying over $300 to get one of those uh, nice quick 861 uh, stations that Louis Rossman is using I hear those stations are pretty good Andreas Pies also has one and showed it in a recent video but I'm gonna stick with the one I have until um, it breaks or I don't know I suddenly start using more hot air and I need a better station so I had a set of nozzles which came with the station when I originally got it but uh, I somehow lost them so I just ordered this set from Aliexpress it has a bunch of uh, different sizes and shapes so I hope they, they are the right diameter to fit the station but I will see about that later and that was uh, all for today I hope you found something interesting in this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and maybe support the channel by hitting the like button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.